Yeah, it's, um, it's actually more complicated for Aboriginal people because the austerity never ends. Uh, usually what happens is the plunder is more severe, but it doesn't affect us in terms of the income that we get because we don't get any income from the plunder of our lands. Um, and that's what makes for the poverty that exists in our communities. So austerity means more theft to us as opposed to other people uh, you know, who, who experience job loss or whatever it is. The other thing that I'm keenly aware of is that it's not austerity for everybody. <laughs> it's austerity for, for workers. Uh, the people who own the companies usually get fairly big welfare checks. I think we were talking the other night about some Ombalgué getting uh, $1.4 billion to move somewhere else and fire everybody, you know, that, that sort of thing. So those are, that's, that's the welfareization of the corporate elite. And that's the other side of the austerity button. Now some of the austerity though that happens to indigenous people is they'll shut down an organization if they don't like the work it's doing. And that happened with the Murdered and Missing Women's uh, Organization. Or uh, the women that are suing the state for the loss of children through the Children's Aid, they lost their funding. But that's not necessarily tied to austerity. Those are political hostage taking. And that happens in our community. Could you actually elaborate uh, on the uh, missing women and uh, maybe describe the situation? Well, we thought there was uh, 600, or actually we thought there was 500 missing women. They, we had a website, uh, the women's pictures were there, their names were there, where they went missing, where they were from, and um, people could add information about them. And then they funded the women's organization that was running it, and one of the conditions was take the the website down, so they did. And then they lost their funding anyway. Should never have taken it off the web. So now we don't have that information, but the RCMP did its own study of itself. I don't think it's thorough. They were just looking for numbers. And they found out there was actually 1,200. So it went from 500 to 1,200. And that's because not all the people that were missing were necessarily reported missing. Um, for instance, I know a family that doesn't read and write. Somebody goes missing, they, they don't read and write, so they don't know that they're missing. They, well, they went to Edmonton, you know, and they're probably still there. But they don't write letters to each other, they don't have phones necessarily and all that sort of thing that everybody else has. And um, they don't contact each other. But one uh, person realized her daughter had been gone a long time and started looking for her on the web with the help of a non-native friend. So some of the, the relations that we're starting to build with non-native people is actually helping us to, to find out, or was helping us to find out who was gone and who was missing. And some people are just gone. You know, they left, they went to the city. They haven't necessarily gotten in touch with anyone at home. Um, but it's happened to me where friends of mine who can't read and write have died and I didn't know because they couldn't send me a letter saying I'm sick. <laughs> you know, they couldn't do it. I don't know why they didn't ask their friends to do it, but that's another, another story altogether. So that's, that's part of um, the kind of uh, thing that we were doing at the time when some of these websites Got, got taken down and, and uh, the organizations dismantled. I think that's kind of a political silencing. And the, the women themselves, uh, a lot of them were missing from highways where they were hitchhiking or from the downtown east side where murder is pretty common. Uh, it's not a safe area. Some of the people that are missing are, are street workers. But a lot of children are missing, and I think there's not enough looking at that, or they've been murdered. Uh, not necessarily by family, but sometimes by family. Or as in the case of the Northern uh, Quebec women here, uh, they've been sexually abused 
and dumped, their bodies dumped somewhere. Sometimes they make it home and sometimes they don't. That's terrible. Yeah. Why do you think that, there, that this is being basically prevented from uh, looking further into the issues? Well, I think uh, there's uh, Amnesty International has documented uh, RCMP and uh, Quebec police and Ontario police participation in it. So if the if the police are involved in it, they're not investigating it. 